Well, good morning, my friends. Russ Barkley here. First off, with an apology for not dropping this research review last Saturday, I happen to be up in New England visiting my youngest grandchildren, so I hope that I can be forgiven. To make it up to you, I'm going to give you another dad joke. This one, of course, related to Christmas. Ta-da! And uh, here's the dad joke. What do you call a broke Santa Claus? Saint Nickel less. Oh, you, you just got to love these. Okay. Don't shoot me. It's okay. Just the messenger. I don't write the material. So, all right. In this week's research review, we're going to cover five different research papers on a variety of topics, but I thought that they would be of interest to you. Uh, and especially because they come from uh, international researchers outside of the U.S. and in some cases outside of the uh, Western countries. So let's have a look here, first of all, at an article published in Pediatric Research, this one dealing with the association of ADHD with disordered eating in adolescents. Now, I know I've covered this in earlier videos on the relationship of ADHD to obesity uh, and that that is mediated by binge eating, disrupted eating pathology, uh, and to some extent, depression and anxiety. What's important about this paper is, first of all, it's a paper that comes out of Israel. And it's a large sample, about 4,600 teenagers were evaluated in this sample. About 654 of them also had ADHD. And they looked at disordered eating symptoms, their relationship to ADHD, and then controlled for a variety of confounding variables. So uh, a really nice study. And what it does is it replicates what we've already known extends this down into adolescence, obviously extrapolates it to a more international audience. This one happened to be in Israel, uh, and uh, finds what we have found in research studies here in the US. There is a significant increase in disordered eating among teens with elevated ADHD symptoms or a diagnosis of ADHD, uh, and that this is also a harbinger of going on to develop a specific eating disorder, typically bulimia or some combination of that with other eating disorders. So I just wanted to highlight that study. Shout out to the Israeli investigators for that and also illustrating replication across science. So these findings suggest that the relationship of ADHD to disrupted eating, particularly binge eating, is a robust one. Uh, let's move on to another study, this one also on eating disorder symptoms. This one comes out of, believe it or not, Iran. So here's a study that looks at participants in Iranian college environments and looks at the link between ADHD symptoms, executive functioning, and disrupted eating. Uh, and once again, now in college students, a little older, but again, the same, I think, important aspects to this study. It's international. It's, of course, uh, this one being over in Iran. It extends the relationship of eating problems into the college population. And this one shows that it is the binge eating, the desire for weight loss, coupled with problems with concentration, of course, due to ADHD, that appear to mediate any link between ADHD, executive functioning, and disrupted eating. So uh, a bit more detail in this study than in the Israeli one, but essentially showing similar relationships between ADHD, the disorder, and disrupted eating, particularly binge eating disorder. So uh, a shout out to the Iranian colleagues who did this study as well. Very nicely done. Next up is a study on the relationship of adult ADHD symptoms to parental cognition. So these are adults with ADHD who are parents trying to parent children. And it looks across all of the studies, a meta-analysis, and you know my thoughts about that, very important to have these meta-analyses that are combining findings across studies. This one shows that uh, after reviewing 15 published papers and including them in the meta-analysis, there's no question that there is a link between ADHD symptoms in adults who are parents and that it's associated with more negative parenting 
cognitions or thoughts about parenting and much less positive thoughts about being a parent. They also found that the age of the child, the severity of the child's problems, and whether or not there was a co-parent involved in managing these children were mediators of this link between dysfunctional parenting cognitions and ADHD, and then of course in outcomes for the children in these studies. So uh, once again showing what we talked about in an earlier video, earlier video of mine on this channel, uh, and that is that ADHD is linked in parents with difficulties with parenting. So let's move on and take a look at our next study, this one published in Clinical Psychology and Psychotherapy, and it's looking at the relationship between mind wandering, rumination, extent of mindfulness, and how those mediate the link of ADHD with its high comorbidity with anxiety and depression. Now, mind you, in my other videos on this channel, I've talked about sluggish cognitive tempo, now renamed cognitive disengagement syndrome, and that that seems to explain the link between ADHD and depression. We know that individuals who engage in more mind wandering and more rumination are more likely to go on to develop depressive symptoms. And we've seen this particularly in individuals with ADHD, but now we know that it isn't ADHD-specific symptoms, but that it is the cognitive disengagement symptoms. And those are excessive mind wandering, rumination, and degree of, of mindfulness. So the extent to which you disengage from the environment and play around in your head, either mind wandering or daydreaming or mind blanking, or in this case, rumination, the greater the likelihood that you're also going to go on and experience depressive symptoms. This study, finds that to also be the case. This is a study out of Turkey, another international study, which is why I highlight it, and it replicates what we have seen in the earlier literature regarding cognitive disengagement syndrome and its specific symptoms of mind wandering. So uh, a very nice study involved 159 adults uh, diagnosed with ADHD who were evaluated on a variety of rating scales of those constructs. So uh, again, I really like the study because it helps to replicate studies that we've seen here in the U.S. using a more international population of adults with ADHD. So uh, great job over there in Turkey with this particular study. Uh, and now let's move on to our last paper. Uh, this is a study that was published in Human Kinetics Journals. Uh, it's a very important study in my opinion because it involves a very large population of athletes with ADHD. This is being conducted by the NCAA here in the United States, large organization, National Collegiate Athletic Association, which has a very specific project following athletes who go on to experience concussions, the extent to which they recover, how fast they recover, and what predicts the risk for these concussive injuries. And no surprise, as you've seen in my other videos on ADHD and health outcomes, there is a strong link here in this large study by the NCAA on ADHD individuals having more concussions during sports participation, having more severe concussions during participation, showing longer recovery times after the concussive event. But get this, those who were taking stimulant medication had less concussive symptoms and recovered faster than those who did not, implying that using stimulant medication may help to facilitate recovery in athletes who have experienced a concussion, and specifically those who have ADHD and experienced a concussion. So again, this kind of replicates earlier, much smaller studies. It's a very large study conducted over three years by the NCAA, showing, just reaffirming what we knew before, but also indicating that ADHD creates a risk for multiple concussive injuries and that stimulant medication may moderate that and lessen 
the symptoms and the recovery time. So a very important, I think, study here. Now, as you know, you can find the links to these studies over in the thumbnail sketch that goes with this video. And as I always say, I don't review the animal research or uh, master's theses or dissertations that haven't been published or peer reviewed yet. We're just covering stuff in the research journal. So uh, again, my apologies for not dropping this a couple of days ago. Hope you'll forgive me, but I really needed a hug from my grandkids over the Christmas holidays here. Uh, and hopefully I'll get you caught up on the research uh, this week as well, because a lot of it has come out in the past two weeks. So uh, again, thanks for joining me on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't. Recommend us to others. Stuff I always say here on the channel. And a happy holidays to all of you uh, from me here in the U.S. and from my channel. Thanks, everybody. Join me again in a couple of days for a commentary and next weekend for more research reviews. Be well, everyone.